this podcast is geared toward nursing students. We will go over the definition of healthcare communication and its impact on patient outcomes. Um, according to an article in Healthy People in 2010, they define uh, healthcare communication as an art and technique of informing, influencing, and motivating individual, institutional, and public audiences about important health issues. And I think that's a great definition of um, healthcare communication. In the scope of healthcare communication, it includes disease prevention, health promotion, healthcare policy, and the business of healthcare, as well as enhancement of quality of life and health of individuals within the community. Um, the relevancy of effective healthcare communication, um, whether it be with other healthcare professionals or clients, um, it, it's really important. Uh, effective communication is the foundation of any successful healthcare team. And communication, we have to remember, is not only verbal, it's also nonverbal. So we have to remember that our nonverbal cues and our body language has to match our verbal communication when we're communicating with other healthcare professionals and patients and their families. We also have to remember that teamwork is not just communication, it's also comprised of trust, respect, and collaboration. All members of the team have to be on the same page, they have to be on board, and they have to communicate effectively with the other members of the team to help reach that uh, mutual team goal. And when they're able to work together, they're able to successfully uh, reach their goals and care for the patient. We also have to remember um, to uh, communicate well with patients and their families. This helps us to build that strong and positive nurse-patient relationship, and it helps um, the patients want to cooperate and be involved in their um, in their recovery and their health care plan. So um, speaking of relevancy of healthcare communication and patient outcomes, uh, when we communicate effectively with our patients and their families, it can improve their overall health well-being and their outcomes. Using strong, effective therapeutic communication with patients and their families, it helps us to gain their trust and respect, and it helps us to build that nurse-patient relationship. When the patients trust us and healthcare professionals in general, they are more willing to help, they're more willing to cooperate and participate in their care, they're more willing to learn about what they need to do to get well. Uh, patients and their families are looking for people who care about them and who listen to them. So um, when we're able to communicate well, we're able to gain their trust and we're able to form those relationships. Um, patients were, are more willing to actively participate in their care when we communicate well, and that's going to improve their overall outcome. And not only are they um, going to want to be active in their care in their hospital settings, but they're also going to be want to want to be active in their care after their discharge, which is going to improve their outcomes as well. So it's important to remember that communicating effectively builds those strong relationships um, so that we can help patients to achieve better outcomes. On the flip side, if we um, do not communicate well, if we have ineffective communication with our patients and their families, it can lead to poor or negative outcomes. Um, they're, they're not going to be as trusting with us if we're not communicating with them well, and we're not going to be able to form that nurse-patient relationship. And without that strong, trusting relationship, they're not going to be willing to listen, they're not going to be willing to learn from us, and they're not going to be willing to participate in their care, which is going to ultimately affect, um, negatively affect their outcomes. So whether the communication we use is inappropriate, whether they're getting mixed communication from the nurses and the doctors, whether the information we're communicating is inaccurate or we're not doing it therapeutically, regardless, if we use ineffective communication in any way, patients and their families are not going to trust or respect us and the healthcare professionals taking care of them, and it's going to negatively affect their health, well-being, and their outcomes. And we also have to remember, too, uh, when we're communicating with other healthcare professionals, if we're not communicating effectively, it can delay patient treatment or result in improper treatment of the patient, which can also lead to um, negative patient outcomes. So that ineffective communication can be very detrimental to patients and their outcomes. So we really want to work on um, communicating effectively and using therapeutic communication. And therapeutic communication is um, it's very important when we're talking to our patients. And Patient care and patient assistance is really the primary goal of that therapeutic communication. We need to gain skill and expert expertise on this aspect, on this therapeutic communication, so that we can um, communicate with them effectively and uh, improve their outcomes. Um, some of the basic 
uh, principles of therapeutic communication I'm going to go over just real quickly. Um, as nurses, when communicating with our patients using therapeutic communication, we want to ensure that the interaction that we're having with the patient um, takes place in an appropriate time when they're comfortable, when they're ready to, to talk to us. Um, maybe not after they've just come out of anesthesia or had a pain medication. We want to make sure that it's um, communicating at the appropriate time with the patient. We also want to consider their physical environment, make sure they um, have a private place so that we can talk to them privately. Um, if any family members are present, maybe ask if they uh, want the, the family members out of the room so we can give them privacy to talk. Uh, we also want to explain the purpose of the discussion at the beginning of the conversation so the patient knows what to expect and knows what we're focusing on and then they're going to be more willing to cooperate with us. Uh, we also need to remember to be non-judgmental when we're communicate, communicating with patients and their families. We need to be aware of our own biases and we have to not allow them to intervene when we're communicating with our patients. And finally, and I think one of the most important things is nurses need to be active listeners when we're using this therapeutic communication. We have to be sure that we understand what the patient is saying. We have to clarify if we need to so that we're both on the same page. We also have to make sure that the patient understands what we're saying and give them opportunities to ask questions. So sometimes we may have to clarify or explain things in a different way so that the patient understands. Um, another part of active listening is avoiding asking yes or no questions. Allow the patient to elaborate. Uh, use these open-ended questions, and you're going to get more information from the patient. Okay, so those are some very important um, principles when using therapeutic communication. So really, um, we need to uh, focus on using effective communication, using therapeutic communication, and um, gaining our patient's trust so that we can form those good relationships and uh, improve our patient and family overall outcomes.